Well, the Serious Games Conference takes place in Sydney later today. One of the people taking part is internet pioneer and artist Joshua Harris. He founded the first internet research company as well as the first internet-based interactive TV network. He's got great insights into the industry. He is visiting Australia right now. and uh, Great to get you in the studio. Great to be Josh, here. Josh, thank you so much. Just tell us uh, about why you're here for the Serious Games Conference. There's a few aspects involved, though. Well, I'm here with, uh, there's, uh, there's a film out called We Live in Public, yes. uh, r which relates to uh, self-surveillance. So um, I'm here to talk about how, um, how the cameras that are turning on us uh, uh, are going to be commercialized and how you know, we're going to live in public, or how we're, how we're going to produce living in public as and entertainment. And how that becomes our future. That's this our is, future. You are known to be quite a visionary for the industry, and that's your reputation. So what are your thoughts about how um, our future will be defined, I guess, by these technologies that you're looking at? Well, what, you know, what, if you go, what's happening now is um, people are talking to each other on the, on the Internet, sort of like on Facebook. It's kind of uh, flat. And the... Uh, what's happening right now is uh, internet television is, is about to hit where you people are going to communicate uh, til, til using telephone telephony. Mm -hmm. So if people are talking on the telephone and um, you, you're going you're to turn the camera on people's homes and when you, how do you combine all the signals when people are at home mm -hmm. talking amongst themselves and produce it into compelling either entertainment or communications, mm -hmm. self-surveillance. And so something that sounds completely out of a movie, you're building a wired city. Wired city. What exactly does that mean? <laughs> well, uh, on, a a Hollywood sense, sound, on a Hollywood soundstage, mm -hmm. a place where people who are, who, are watch, who are communicating in the virtual world can come and meet each other and uh, uh, live, live, communicate, um, and spend their whole day talking to the people that on the outside, mm. sort of like the matrix where people come in, I burn out their battery, you know, have them talk to each other, ship them off and bring in, you know, fresh people to talk with each other. Because this has always been your view, your long held view that lives will be lived not only on the web but in the public as well and you've said that for such a long time. Is, is it becoming a reality then? Yeah, I mean, w when television came in, the medium that we're sitting in now, it it kind of blew this, a lot of the social connections from the, you know, the days of yore when you lived in the village and you knew everybody. It kind of blew it up. And what's happening with the web is, and net television, it's reweaving the social, the human condition, the social human condition so that we can have those synthetic connections in the virtual world and sort of connecting people in space and time. So, for example, in the Wired City, I'm going to have a, a, a bathroom, and in my bathroom, there'll be a shaving mirror. Mm -hmm. and, th and the people living in physically in the city will all shave together, but the people on the outside, the guys on the outside, when they go to shave in the morning, they'll have people shaving with them from all over the world. And in that day part, they are together, and it's a meaningful experience, and it's people they want to be with. In the real world, you can't do that because you got, you know, it's the usual people that you live with. Sure. So that's kind of the future. And when that happens, when you start living parts of your life with other people in the virtual world, the human condition changes. It's sort of like we go from living as a single processor, like a computer that's not hooked in. If you think of your brain as like a, a, a very powerful computer to all of a sudden uh, very efficiently linking the human brain to other human brains and some other, some other entity begins to emerge. This sounds like it, it, it's like 100, 200 years off when we've got robots running things and you five think it's obviously years, sooner than that. Five ten years? ten years. And, and the reason it will happen, George Orwell was kind of wrong. He, you know, in the book he says the government is going to you know, impose people watching. You know, the government's going to be watching you. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that people demand it and there'll be a market for it. So I'm actually commercially attempting to uh, make a viable Big Brother. Meaning I was, uh, all I'm thinking when you're talking ask, is Big Brother times it. a thousand. It's <laughs> Big Brother, the real, the, yeah, Big Brother, not the TV series, yeah. Big Brother, the George Orwell. But this is where the concept, you know, you had a vision for this idea of Big Brother long before it actually came on television and became such, such a success. And obviously, um, the one of the issues that you've had with your visions is, and it's the same you know, problem we have with Twitter and Facebook when they get created, monetizing that, having this idea but, but making money out of it. Is this, is this still a struggle, being so ahead of your time? 
No, it's time is now. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Great. At, at some point, I'll hit a million signal hours, meaning a million hours of pe people will watch, uh, my audience will, get, uh, will watch for a million hours. When that happens, um, you hit a critical mass. And at that moment, I'm going to ask 10,000 people simultaneously to hold up a tube of Crest toothpaste. <laughs> And what they're going to do is they're going to look, look, at, 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 and s look at Procter & Gamble and say, we want you to sponsor us. 10,000 people <laughs> all doing the same thing at the same time on, on, on the net television. Yeah. And Procter & Gamble will have a choice. They can either sponsor, be a sponsor, <laughs> but if they don't, the next day, the same 10,000 people will hold up a tube of toothpaste and it will be Colgate. This is blackmail. <laughs> it's it's the, the covenant, the, the covenant Fantastic. between the, uh, the the consumer and the and the manufacturer has now changed. We, I think it sounds fascinating, and it is great to have you here chatting to us. And you're in Australia, obviously, um, because you do have these visions, and everyone's really interested to, to hear about it. So thanks for your time in studio today. Thank Pleasure, you. Brooke.